Hey everybody, welcome back to the shop. I hope you are all doing well and you're staying safe out there. Today, considering the conditions of the world at the moment, I figured it would be a good time to address the family backup generator here. Um, we bought this generator probably 10 years ago and we used it, we needed it exactly once in the past 10 years, but it was good that we had it because that one time that we needed it, there was a power outage for a week in the middle of the winter. So, and this thing powered our furnace, our gas furnace, and our refrigerator during that time. Uh, since then, it has sat and it's going to need a little bit of love to get back up and running. And I figured I'd take you guys along for the journey. So, if this type of thing interests you, stick around. You know, taking a quick walk around of this thing, uh, you can see how filthy it is. For the longest time, it just sat in a corner of my barn back when I was working out of the barn and um, got sawdust all over it. And then for the past three or four years, it's been sitting in my shed under a pile of landscaping supplies like, um, I don't know, probably some bug killer and some fertilizer and things like that so it has been neglected it stopped running a long time ago long before I knew anything about motors and so I just kinda let it sit there but now I know just a little bit what I'm doing I'm gonna try to clean it up I'm gonna probably pull the carburetor and clean that up I think it might have a little bit of water in the fuel system we're gonna find all that out right now just for the sake of being thorough, I'm going to pull it and make sure it turns over and everything. There's no fuel in it right now, so it shouldn't want to fire, but just in case, I will turn it on. And so plenty of compression, everything's still good in that part, it's not locked up. When I had mentioned that there was a little bit of fuel, or a little bit of water in the fuel, I'm just thinking maybe there's water in the bowl of the carburetor. So that's the first thing we're going to check. I'm going to take off the air cleaner, get to the carburetor, pull the carburetor bowl off and see what I find inside there. Okay, filter looks brand new. Which is great. There's nothing wrong there. Intake is super clean. I'm not sure what this shroud is for. I guess it's just to It's like uh, it directs the air into the filter, I guess. Maybe it's to protect the filter from external dustiness and whatnot. I got a. Oh, I might not have to take this off. I'm gonna have to grab a nut driver to get this off, or a socket or something, and uh, then I can get to the carburetor. little varnish there to be expected all right so I want to get something in there to catch whatever comes out of the bowl let me zoom in there well I am zoomed in so we'll see what I can rig up to catch whatever comes out of the bowl well, it's nice to know that one of those nuts holding on that air cover was cross-threaded onto the stud. It was really hard to get off. 
I think I have to pull the studs out. They've got these little star type ends on the stud and I think that's what's holding there's like a little shoulder in there and that's what's holding the carburetor in place I was gonna just pull the bowl off but there is no bolt on the bottom of the bowl holding on the bowls being held on with two screws on either side and I can't reach them with the screwdriver so I'm gonna have to take the whole carburetor off I was gonna have to clean the carburetor anyway you can see just the the varnish that's on this so I'll uh, get to that right now. Well, I don't think these studs are going to come out, at least with the tools that I have. Uh, you know, Briggs & Stratton has made sure to make it as difficult as possible to get these off. And um, so I'm a little bit at a loss. What I'm going to try to do is I'm going to work, continue to work on getting this shroud off. And then I'm going to try to pull the bowl off from underneath with the two screws and just clean out the bowl. I think as long as I clean out the bowl and like where the uh, fuel is pulled up from, from the bowl, I, I should be able to get this going. So I'm going to give that a shot. Held on with 10 millimeter, um, a 10 millimeter bolt, and the air cover was held on with 11 millimeters. Seems strange. And I'm just camming out on this screw. It is Phillips, I'm gonna grab a Phillips screw. There we go. Sticky. I wonder if there's, uh, what do you call it? I wonder if there's uh, Loctite on these or something. That's not going to fit. Nope, there's nothing under there. Woo! Take a look in there. That is some old gas right there. Oops. And there's a spring in there, and I don't know where it goes. It's it's such a tight fit. I mean, I was all this plastic, you know, the ever, all the components inside here are all plastic, and I was afraid I was going to snap the plastic trying to wedge this out because this aluminum or steel housing, whatever that is, is right in the way of being able to get the bowl. They give you no way to drain the bowl. You know, at, at the end of the season, I guess you just have to run it dry. I don't know. It's almost like it's designed to only work once. Everything else looks okay. I mean, I'll try to... I don't know if there's anything left in this tank. There we go. A little bit. The fact that it held it back and then let it go once I opened the petcock 
is probably good enough for me. Um, so now I have to figure out that spring. Yeah, it fits up in there pretty tight, so I'm assuming that's where it goes. I just don't know how to keep it up there while I'm putting this back together. It's going to be a challenge without being able to take the whole carburetor off like I wanted to. I'm going to play around with that for a minute and I'll get right back. Okay, the bowl's all clean and the good news is that there was no water in the system like I had uh, thought I would come across. So there's no crazy corrosion or anything inside the bowl. Um, and so I just pretty much sprayed down the whole interior of the carburetor with the regular, you know, carburetor cleaner. The cheap stuff you can buy at Walmart. And uh, I'm going to attempt to reassemble this now. And um, so wish me luck. Alright, well, I think I got lucky on the first try getting that back together. So what I'm going to do is use a little bit of that same carb cleaner, use it as starting fluid and uh, see if it'll kick over um, as it is. All right, not bad. Thing sure does rattle. Um, I'm going to put it all back together, put a little bit of fuel in it, and uh, try to get it to turn over with the fuel. And, you know, this stuff is highly volatile, so it'll, it'll fire over on the worst engines. The real test is going to be getting it to uh, run on regular fuel. It's probably the worst thing about this is that I, won't, I don't want to put too much gas in here in case I don't use it. I hate these new gas cans, I swear. So I don't want to put too much in. Well, don't want to put not enough in either. Okay, the petcock is on. Give it a second to fill up. Maybe I'll pull my tools off because it's probably going to come out on my bench. Alright, let's see how many pulls it takes. bad when it idled down it started rattling pretty bad but when it, the idle was high it was pretty smooth all right I figured before I put it away and before I run out of gas I'll try to run something on it just to make sure that the dynamo or whatever you call it the generator works and then and then I'm uh, gonna run it out of fuel and then just put it away ready to run
Okay, so the first time I ran it, it was a little rough. I don't know if you guys caught what I did wrong there, but I had I had left the choke on. Once I took the choke off, it revved right up, and you saw it ran fine with that uh, with that sander. My eyes are burning in here from all the exhaust fumes, so I'm gonna I'm gonna wrap this one up. Basically, I'm just gonna I'm gonna probably check the oil, change the oil, wash it, and um, put it away for when I need it, a rainy day or whatever the case may be. These are great to have when you need them. The problem is you don't run them that often, and they're not really designed to uh, use and then store and then use and then store, you know, years apart because of the gas situation. I think I'm probably going to put a, you know, like a a T-valve on the fuel line. That way I can drain the remainder of the fuel out of the tank if I so choose and uh, just try to run this low all the time. So anyway, button it up, clean it up, and uh, it'll be good to go. Well here it is all cleaned up, or at least to the best or to the most that I'm willing to do. Um, the dust really doesn't affect the performance or anything, it just didn't look nice and I'm going to store it in a place where it won't get dirty like that again. So I'm just going to, I haven't, I haven't run all the fuel out of it yet, <clears throat> so I'm going to go do that and then put it away and I'll set it aside for a rainy day and hope I never need to use it. You know, only have it available for when I want to use it. I realize this video was somewhat anticlimactic um, because it was just a dirty carburetor issue, but I can tell you when it comes to small engines, nine times out of ten, that's the issue is a carburetor issue. And then that other one out of ten is usually a f some type of a fuel system issue if it's not the carburetor. And this is a good you know this is good for people who understand how carburetors work because most people will just end up not being able to start their small lawn equipment and things and just throw it out thinking it's bad and usually just with a little bit of disassembly and cleaning you can get things up and running again so I hope you guys enjoyed the video if you did go ahead and you know leave a like if you haven't yet subscribe to my channel uh, go ahead and leave a comment if you feel so inclined and uh, I hope you guys are staying safe out there. I'll see you next time.